Has your NMN supplement been banned forever by a push by Dr. David Sinclair Company? Have we lost a powerful longevity supplement forever from our toolkit? Let's see what happens, what does it mean to you, and what do I think will happen next. Now let's start. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Riman. So what happened? What caused us to reach this point of banning NMN, if indeed that's the situation? Well, Metro Biotech, a company that was co-founded by Dr. David Sinclair and is still an advisor in this company, they submitted a letter, a formal letter to the FDA. In that letter, they claimed, I'm quoting, Metro is the sole source of MIB-626, a proprietary form of beta-nicotinamide mononucleotide, which is NMN. By the way, beta is simply means the active form. So when you say beta NMN, you actually say NMN. It's similar to resveratrol. When you say trans resveratrol, you mean resveratrol. That's the only way to call it. Once you change it to cis resveratrol, it's no longer resveratrol. So this is the case with alpha NMN. So beta NMN is NMN. So I continue to quote, which is authorized for the investigation as a new drug for which substantial clinical investigation have been instituted. Then they go and say that we institute a publicly available clinical trials on beta NMN. So basically what they say that they follow their criteria to exclude NMN from being a supplement. And then they go ahead and say, we request that the FDA take the preclusion provision of Section 201 of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act seriously to protect the right of companies that have spent significant time and research to develop drugs products from competition from dietary supplements that are clearly new dietary ingredients that have never filed a new dietary ingredient notification prior to the institution of, of substantial clinical trials. In essence, Metro Biotech says we spent a lot of time to develop this drug and because we follow certain criteria, we believe that it is our right to protect our property by excluding competition from nutritional supplements. So first of all, to me, this request is a mystery because why would a company that makes a unique derivative of NMN that no one else can, could get on the market today will request NMN, the supplement, a natural molecule produced by the body to be removed from the supplement list in the US. So you're talking about a different chemical from the one this company is working on. Now, let me give you a parallel. Do you remember that Dr. David Sinclair previous company, they created a patent over a derivative of resveratrol, but they never asked the FDA to remove resveratrol from the market. It made no sense. So why this request all of a sudden? The company feels that as opposed to resveratrol and has been around for a long time, NMN is quite new. So to me, I think why they try to do it to use the fact that NMN is a novel supplement. Now we have two questions. One is what are the ramifications if indeed NMN will be banned? And the second is, is the fight over? Is NMN banned from the market? There are four ramifications I can think of. The first one has to do with our freedoms. This hurts our longevity community greatly. It prevents experimentation by individuals. You have no idea how little data we have on NMN. This is one of the reasons why I do not publish uh, videos on this supplement. So one of the things I do because I have no other ways to gather data is, is experimenting on myself and also watching the experimentations of others. This prevents this growth of new data, of, of data that we can use right now to make our own conclusions about our own bodies. The second ramification is on my personal situation. As you know, my wife had a stroke and NMN is one of the things I would like to try in order to see how it's going to affect her stroke because NMN has a very potent neurological activity. And I think it could be a fantastic experiment for all longevity just to see if it's going to be an increase somehow in the recovery rate of my wife. And to me, it's going to hurt me personally if I would not be able to get NMN. The third potential ramification has to do with the choice of our supplement. So far, there was a fight between NR and NMN. NMN did not have a patent and NR uh, had a patent by Chromadex. And of course, Chromadex were happy to hear that NMN is possibly be going to be removed from the market. One of the ramifications is going to be that we would be forced to choose NR 
over NMN. And I find it quite ironic that David Sinclair uh, spoke again and again how he had seen cardiovascular muscular benefits from NMN but not with NR in his lab. And yet his company uh, submitted a claim to take away the supplement from the market. I do not believe that David Sinclair has been behind this initiative. Well, at least I want to believe that uh, it didn't come from him. Banned for life. Well, there are a few things that give us hope. The first thing that gives us hope is N-acetylcysteine, NAC case. N-acetylcysteine is another food supplement that enables the body to receive cysteine, a simple amino acid. And there was a drug that developed around that uh, supplement. And indeed, the FDA announced that it is being removed from the supplement options for the consumer. Yet in August 2022, the FDA proclaimed, the FDA is announcing the availability of final guidance of the FDA's policy regarding products labeled as dietary supplements that contain N-acetylcysteine. This guidance explains our intent to exercise enforcement discretion, meaning they do not intend to ban all the, the supplements with respect to the sale and distribution of certain NAC containing products. So here we see the FDA exercise discretion in regards to food supplements, even though previously it suggested it should be removed from being a food supplement because it's being used as a drug. And I believe the FDA too will realize that NMN is a natural metabolite in our bodies, not a drug, it's not a hormone, and it's going to exercise the same discretion. The only issue is going to be that it's going to be in the gray zone and not going to be white or black. That's going to be the main issue, but, but I think this is what is going to happen. Especially if that, let me tell you another aspect of that, a legal aspect. I live in the UK. And the health authorities here in the UK have a different approach than in the US. In the US, the FDA usually stick to the GRASS guideline, which means generally regarded as safe. And the FDA historical stance on this has been that if something does not pose a threat to the consumer, it's not going to deal with the personal choice of the consumer with food supplements because it says we don't regulate these to begin with. So take the responsibility, it's your body. In the UK, they view it differently. The authorities view themselves as a protectors of the consumer. And therefore, you have to prove that something is effective and safe if it's a new supplement on the market. So I think the FDA is going to continue to keep to his historical stance on that subject. Another thing that gives us hope is the fact that we are witnessing a fight, not a conclusion. For example, the CRN, the Council of Responsible Nutrition, has sent a letter to the FDA criticizing the FDA, I'm quoting, Association says agencies stifling innovation and acting with disregard for consumer interests. So let's hope that indeed we're witnessing a fight and not a final decision. And the fourth reason for hope is that Dr. David Sinclair is a co-founder and advisor of the same company that requested the NMN to be removed from the market. And why would I say that this is a hope? Because so we have pressure from one side, which is the consumer side. But what about the pressure from within the company that filed this complaint to the FDA? And I believe that Dr. David Sinclair as a co-founder, as a consultant, he has the power to reverse this decision. I believe that Dr. Sinclair will ask his company to remove this request. I don't think it's going to be good for his reputation. And I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt of not being part of this management decision of requesting the protection of his NMN derivative to take down the NMN supplement from the market. So I believe that Dr. David Sinclair is going to do the right thing. My conclusion is this, let's be a bit more relaxed. I think at this position that the decision is not over. As we have seen that there is a big difference between announcing a decision by the FDA comparing to enacting and forcing this decision. I think the FDA is going to have some pressure from the consumers and other consumer organizations. And I think also the company itself that submitted this request is going to have a pressure from the consumers and also from possibly from Dr. David Sinclair, as I hope he will do. So let's not jump into conclusions yet. But if I were to take NMN, of course, I would accumulate some just in case for the unseen future. So I hope that freedom is going to win in this decision. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay young and see you in the next video.